Hi, I'm Jeannie. Welcome to Mimi Craft, your home for all things creative and DIY on a budget. I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. Hello, my Mimi Crafters and visitors. If you enjoy the video today, please don't forget to hit the like button and share the video with friends and family. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Now, on with the projects. The first project is a lantern. We'll begin by gluing three black pieces together, as you see here in the video, wide side to skinny side to wide side. You'll make a total of 42 of these. You'll need both hot glue and wood glue for this project. First, build yourself a template with um, tumbling tower blocks. The way you see here in the video, they're gonna be five tall by three wide. The three wide won't be exact. We're gonna use three of the three block sets on the top and the bottom to determine where to glue that last piece of the frame. So there's your template. There will be two sides with 11 three block um, pieces and two sides with 10 three block pieces. You'll start by gluing them as you see here in the video. You're going to take the middle one and glue it one block width down. It's much easier just to watch what I'm doing than to listen. Keep repeating in the same pattern as you see here on screen. It's very important that the pieces are pressed up against the sides and top and bottom in corners of the template um, because when you go to glue the sides together, you really need things all in the same place. These busts can be pretty irregular. That's why I glued the four corners, or I should say the top and the bottom first. Figured that way, if I had to fudge a little bit on the spacing, I could do it in the middle and it wouldn't be very noticeable. This ended up working out just fine. I was pretty surprised, to be honest. You want to be sure to add extra glue into all these little crevices because some of them touch very lightly and occasionally they don't touch at all. So you want to make sure you get a really good bond in there. This is the 10 block pattern. I had a piece that was just a little bit too wide so I had to use sandpaper to sand it down so it would fit. When all four sides are dry, this is the best time to paint the inside of the lantern if you want the lantern to be painted. You'll be attaching opposite patterns at the corner. You're going to start by turning, um, we'll just take the 10 block pattern, turn it upside down, or I should say, um, yeah, upside down, and then take the opposite pattern Make sure that the inside or the wrong side is, is pointing in, and it's going to be glued just like that. I'm using the frame to line everything up. And to show me where my glue needs to go, I put just a little dab all the way across and then filled it in. I 
used a couple bottles to support this side while it dried. I grabbed my level and I made sure that the sidewall was perfectly plumb, made adjustments to the bottles, and then just let it dry. Repeat the procedure for the other side. For extra support, I recommend that you add some hot glue to those inside seams. It really makes this a whole lot sturdier. Here's a close-up of that. Place the glue all the same places as you did for the other ones, but on both sides. And I totally missed a spot over there. Dang it. And here it is. And here it is with fairy lights. Our second project will be some tea light holders to match the lantern. You're going to start, well, you're going to need 48 blocks total, and you're going to glue the blocks the same way you did the others but you're only going to need uh, four of these black sets for each one of the little tea light holders. Here I am making all of them. And this is how you glue them together. You want to glue them into a square. This is the first one. I'm gonna wanna add some of these little wood blocks from Dollar Tree to fill in some space so that we don't see any negative space when the tea lights are sitting on this. And the easiest way to do this is to do it from the bottom. The bottom will become the top. You'll see as we go. Flip it over when it's dry, and now the bottom is the top. And the tea light sits right on top of that. Now you're going to add legs to the second tea light holder, and they'll just be one block tall. The third tea light holder will have four legs that are two blocks tall. So you're going to want to take eight blocks and glue them end to end as you see here. When those are dry, glue them to the bottom just like in the last tea light holder. And here they are. Now your lantern won't be lonely.
wanted to see what this looked like painted black, so I used some black chalk paint. These seem pretty plain, so I decided to highlight them with a little bit of rub and buff wax, as you see here. Now you want to seal your projects with Mod Podge because it makes them easier to clean. It keeps the dust from sticking so much to the box. And this is how it turned out. The third project is some wall lighting. This $450 light was my inspiration from Pinterest. I was able to make it for under 20 bucks. Start out with two rows of six blocks glued end to end. Turn each of these block sets up on their skinny side and close in the box with one block on each end placed as you see here, glued between the two long rows. Make a bottom for this box by gluing 18 blocks placing them on their wide side. Make sure you've got glue top, bottom, and sides uh, going all the way across. Add two more rows of blocks to build up the sides for a total of three. This is how it should look. Now we're going to be sanding this both to smooth it out and to make a little bit of sawdust for filling in cracks. Wherever you see an opening, place some glue in it with your glue bottle and then use your finger to push it down into the little crevice. As you're sanding the surface, you can take the sawdust and push it into those cracks and it will become one with the glue and fill in those spaces. When it's dry, use some fine sandpaper, maybe 220, even 400, to smooth off the surface. And that's how it should look. Seal the box with Mod Podge. For the base of the fixture, glue 42 blocks together. Glue them 3 tall by 14 wide. It's a good idea to dry fit these before you glue them together. This layer, I did that, but on the second layer I did not. By the way, you're supposed to make two of these, but you'll see that coming up.
Glue your two layers together with wood glue. Because I didn't dry fit this layer, that side came out really wonky, so I decided to cut it off. It was too much to just sand. So I drew a pencil line, and I actually hand sawed this off. It was a bear. When I was done doing that, then I sanded everything smooth. And I did the same thing with this that I did with the box, where I put the glue in all the little cracks. You can see here I'm kind of gathering up my sawdust. But putting the glue in all the cracks and then filling them in with the remaining sawdust, like you see here. a dry paintbrush to remove all the rest of the sawdust. And that's what it looks like. And then I did a fine sand and I used 400 grit sandpaper to get it nice and smooth and get rid of all those little grains. And when I was done with that, I used a soft cloth, this is a t-shirt, to get rid of any sawdust remaining. Don't forget to seal it with Mod Podge. Next we'll be making some rectangles. They will be 10 blocks by three blocks. Glue them end to end um, on the, laying them down on the broad side. And then to reinforce them, after you've got them all laying down, you're gonna use some craft sticks slash popsicle sticks for extra support. You wanna do that on um, both sides. I've got, um, I should say all four sides because I'm making two rectangles. Place some weight on top of the popsicle sticks to make sure that they glue nicely to the blocks. Next, make the short sides three blocks long. You'll be gluing the short sides on top of the long sides and here you can see me cutting pieces of popsicle sticks because I want to support those joints where the short sides and long sides are joined. I sanded the whole thing, including the sides, to make the sides even. You can still see the separate blocks, but I just thought it looked a whole lot neater. Paint all the sides, including the back, because I think those little popsicle sticks are going to show just a tiny bit from the sides. Um, so paint everything with chalk paint. I chose black. Here I am sealing the rectangles with some more Mod Podge. Time to attach the rectangles to the base. If you count up seven on the base, that will be the center. If you count up five on the rectangle, that will be the center. Place the rectangle centered on the line of the first column. It should pretty much cover up that, that line. 
I've got two blocks on either side supporting uh, the side that's hanging in the air. Then take a pencil and draw a line and that's just going to help you to know where to put your glue. I'm going to be using both E6000 and hot glue. I put the E6000 down already and now the hot glue will just hold it there while we wait for the E16 to cure. Press down firmly. E16, E6000. Duh. The other rectangle will be placed the same way, except you're going to lower it down by two blocks. Two blocks on compared to the other rectangle, that is. By the way, the orientation of this lighting is going to be vertical, not horizontal as you see this. This is just because of my camera setup. I wanted you to be able to see everything. Again, lay down E6000 first, then your hot glue, and then place your rectangle and press down firmly while you wait for the hot glue to cool. Time to put the light inside the box. This is rechargeable bar light. They were really affordable on Amazon. I decided to use command strips because I wanted to be able to reuse the light. The command st strip stuck really well to the light but it didn't stick to the wood. So I ended up off camera using hot glue. Now, when you see me placing this light, it looks like it's centered perfectly. And the casing for the light is centered perfectly, but the light itself is off to the left. It should be placed like that so that the actual light part of it is in the center. This is the correct orientation with the light pointing down. Now I'm going to count up three rows to place the light. This is the wrong placement. I mean, if you want it here, that's great. I didn't like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through this and then correct it later. What I did is I counted up three rows and lined up the bottom of the light box with that so I would know where to place the light. Next, I placed some hot glue. This is gonna temporarily hold the light while we put screws in all the way through the base, the rectangles, and the light box. Here I am placing the light completely off center. I had to rip it off and do it again. Flip the project over as the screws are going in the back. By the way, as you face the project, the left triangle, triangle, rectangle, will be up higher uh, then the right, that's the orientation. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that the screws are not going to go into where the light is. So I'm doing it on the bottom row of the box. And then I'm also making sure that the screws are going to go through the frame as well. So that's where I made my pencil marks for the screw placement. drilled pilot holes first and then placed the screws. Even with the pilot holes I had a little bit of cracking. I recommend a sawtooth hanger for the top. This is pretty light but I think this is a good idea. I pre-drilled some pilot holes and then screwed in the screws for the sawtooth hanger. So this is the outcome I wasn't happy with. I didn't like how low the light was. I wanted it up higher. So that's when I switched it around. So what I did to fix this was to take that box off and flip it around the other way and then change where the hanger is. So that way the light would still be using the same screw holes but it would be on the top instead of the bottom. I sure hope this makes sense. I put the screws in most of the way so that they would just be poking through and that way you can see they're a close-up I was able to put the box directly over it using the same holes that were in the box before. I laid down some hot glue and then matched the holes up with those little screws that held it still enough for me to be able to flip it over and screw it all the way in.
Here I am putting the sawtooth hanger in its new position. And then I also, after I did this, you'll see in a minute, I glued a block on the bottom to help balance this when it hangs on the wall. Plus it hides my mistake. Because I flipped the box around, I had to make some repairs to the front. So where the damage is, I took some acetone to remove the paint. I repainted that section. and resealed it with Mod Podge. And this is the final outcome. Hope you think it was worth it. Here it is with its candle cousins. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below which project was your favorite and let me know if there's any project you would like to see me make. Until the next one, bye!